So many people have expressed concerns that the use of PrEP will mean that people won't use condoms. And clinicians have to take a couple issues into account. Uh, PrEP, if taken every day, is highly effective uh, against HIV. So if we don't want people to become uh, infected, we certainly want them to be using PrEP. But the key is working with the patient to identify somebody who, number one, if the person's already using condoms and doesn't have a problem using condoms, then we don't want to say, gee, start taking a pill instead. So you have to kind of know your, your patient. Some people don't need PrEP because they're not at risk. Other people have no problem using condoms. On the other hand, we know that a lot of people don't like condoms or don't use them regularly, and those are the individuals who are very high risk for HIV. And the good thing about PrEP is that if you're risky for a year in your life or when you're young for five years, um, th the day you are not risky anymore, you can stop PrEP and you don't have to take the medicine for the rest of your life. Once you become HIV infected, if you're 18 years old, you, right now we don't have a cure, so you have to be on the medication for the rest of your life. So that's, that's, that's the balance. But the reason why we don't want to make it PrEP or condoms is that some people who are very risky um, in terms of HIV who have multiple sexual partners, for example, somebody who's a, a sex worker, uh, that individual is not just at risk for HIV, they're at risk for bacterial STIs. Uh, uh, so, for example, they could get gonorrhea, they could get syphilis, they could get chlamydia. Uh, the medication for PrEP will not protect them against that. So if those individuals are concerned about the other STIs, uh, they still need to use condoms. So it's, again, a nuanced discussion. Some people will say, well, I'm not so worried about those infections. I can get screened, and I just, I can't, I can't use condoms. I'm not able to maintain an erection. I, 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 um, the, my quality of life is not good. For that person, PrEP is preferable. On the other hand, if somebody says, um, I would be so um, freaked out if I had any of these infections, what do I do to protect myself? Then I'd say, you know, well, PrEP will give you protection against HIV. Condoms do sometimes break, so they're not 100%. So if you want, you know, if you want a belt and suspenders approach, condoms plus PrEP, and there are some people who elect for that. But I think it again gets back to primary care uh, uh, providers really having a good sense of their patients and talking to them and trying to understand what, you know, what are their patterns of sexual behavior and what are the trade-offs they're willing to make. The good thing about PrEP is now it's another tool that we have at our disposal, but certainly it's not good for providers to just write a script and not talk to patients about it because it's really important that the patients are motivated to be adherent and they understand what protection it provides, what protection it doesn't, and even though the incidence of side effects is low, it's not zero. So it's very important for the patient to be an informed consumer before starting PrEP.